One area I want to make sure we have time to dig into is Alzheimer's. And this is something you've been talking about more in the last couple of years since we last talked. Right. And you've done some work with Dr. Bredesen, Dr. Perlmutter, previous guests of the show. Talk about this hypothesis related to the, what we've been talking about and the work you've done to this point and how it ties into dementia. Well, it's been known for a long time that uh, Alzheimer's is actually increasing it, it was, it's, it's, a, it's a metabolic disease. Um, it's associated with diabetes and obesity. Uh, and so we've known that there's this link. We've known that just as diabetes and obesity are increasing, so is Alzheimer's. So, so it used to be thought Alzheimer's was something completely different. Uh, but now it's being recognized more and more as a metabolic disease. And it's associated with these special things called amyloid plaques. So people have been focused on that, but it's also associated with insulin resistance in the brain. So a lot of people call it brain diabetes. And in previous years, people are now trying to treat it, for example, like by giving intranasal insulin and things like that. So there is this recognition that some of the earliest changes in Alzheimer's are associated with like uh, insulin resistance and with a reduction in ATP production in the brain and with suppression of the mitochondria. So it doesn't take a big jump to go, oh my gosh, that's what fructose does. And then when people start looking like in the brains of patients with Alzheimer's, they've been finding very high fructose levels, five to seven fold higher than normal. And they find activation of the fructose enzymes. And they find evidence of the fructose pathway. And then if you give sugar to animals, they just, after a while, they have trouble going through a maze. And when you look in their brains, they develop insulin resistance. And they get mitochondrial problems. They don't make enough ATP. And it affects exactly those sites of the, of the brain where Alzheimer's occurs. And then if you give sugar long enough, they start forming amyloid plaques. I tell you, also things like high salt diets and high sugar diets have also been linked with Alzheimer's. It's, it's like a perfect fit. No one has ever found a, a pathway for Alzheimer's from the beginning to the end that fits. This one fits completely. The risk factors the findings in the brain, the sites in the brain. And interestingly, there was a survival mechanism initially because the way sugar works is when it first works on the brain, it kind of stimulates foraging. And to stimulate foraging, it, it makes you, uh, you know, wander looking for things. It stimulates this kind of activity. It makes you hungry. And the way it, that, that, that does it is it actually turns off areas of the brain and makes those areas insulin resistant. And that actually makes, these are areas in the brain that are involved in self-control. And so by blocking that, it makes you more willing to go into dangerous places to look for food and stimulates foraging, but it's actually act inhibiting the neurons in certain regions of the brain that are involved in memory and uh, reasoning and things like that. Because if you're going to forage, you really want to be able to, to go into dangerous areas. And so what's happened is when people develop Alzheimer's, they develop a wandering syndrome, six out of nine do, where they will wander off and no one really understood that. Now we understand that that's actually a carryover of this foraging pathway. So I think the whole story fits. Risk factors, mechanism, evidence in humans from the beginning to the end. And so the question is, how? what's actually driving it? Well, as we mentioned, when you eat fructose, a lot of the fructose we eat is taken up in the liver. But whenever that blood glucose goes up, you're producing fructose in the brain. And a group in Yale actually showed it in people. 
that brain fructose levels go up 30 minutes after your blood glucose levels go up. So controlling blood glucose and preventing that postprandial glucose rise probably is the most important thing we can do to prevent Alzheimer's. I think it's one of the number one mechanisms. So I think that uh, we should all be reducing the carb intakes. We should be careful with how much sugar we eat. You know, we should stay well hydrated. You know, if you want to try the allulose, it may be beneficial here um, and, uh, and so forth. I also have a little research foundation. If you look up my name and if you have a desire to help do research on this, uh, any money you put into that research foundation will go strictly to research 100%. And we'll be looking at, you know, how fructose causes Alzheimer's. Has there been so any that, research showing reversal? Somebody that's at the stage where they've had cognitive decline, plaques in the brain. There is one. Apply what we're talking about today and go back the other way. It, well, Dale Bredesen believes that, you know, he has found evidence that you know, initiating a very healthy diet can can have benefit. GLP-1 agents have been shown to help slow dementia, maybe even reverse it a little bit. Um, so there is some evidence that you can. And interestingly, there was a paper published about three, four months ago where they blocked that fructokinase, that fructose enzyme in the brain in, in diabetic animals that were having trouble going through a maze, and it helped them. It helped. So I, I do believe that if you catch this early, you can reverse it. Uh, the trouble is, is that by the time it presents and the brain is shrunken, you know, because over time the brain starts to shrink, I'm not sure we can bring back the brain to normal size. I don't, that would be, that would be incredible. There may be a day we can, but we certainly can't do it now. But if we can, uh, you know, catch it early. So when people are beginning to develop memory problems and it's still early, you know, consider consider going on a keto diet, consider cutting out carbs, consider changing all these things, consider taking allulose. Throughout our conversation, we've talked a lot about converting glucose to fructose and some of the things that catalyze that reaction. You brought it up again when we were talking about the brain specifically and dementia the creation of fructose within the brain, is that different than the general conversation we've been having throughout? No, it's really the same story. It's just that this is going on in the brain um, and it's also going on in the kidney. It's probably going on in the islets of the pancreas. No, it's all one story, frankly. <clears throat> but... Um, yeah, it's all this, and all the same foods that can stimulate fructose in the brain will stimulate it in the liver, and et cetera, et cetera. So they, they they all they all are pretty much the same. The only difference is that dietary fructose, only a small amount of diet fructose gets to the brain, but but the fructose generates things that still affect the brain. If you enjoyed that clip, you're gonna to wanna to head over here and catch a full episode. I'll see you over there. Getting fat is a normal process for many animals and they do it to protect themselves during times when food is not around. So what's really interesting is officially, people who are overweight are high energy.